Привет, фанов фотографии! И добро пожаловать в десятый эпизод о классических фотоаппаратах. Сегодня мы будем обсуждать другой классический фотоаппарат. Москва 4. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. And no, my Russian is not that great. I, I know how to say a few things, but that's pretty much it. Let's talk about this beauty. Москва 4. Folding 6x9 slash 6x6 camera built between 1955-1958. I've been looking for one of these beauties for quite a while. But the prices were rather high for what I think this camera is worth. The prices can reach about $100 and that's a little bit too steep for me. So I found this beauty on the great old auction site from Ukraine for about $45 plus I believe it was $15 shipping. Why such a low price, you ask? It is mainly because there was a small pinhole uh, on, uh, in the bellows right behind the taking, uh, right behind the lens, and therefore I had to fix it. I had to put some silicone rubber to to um, patch it, but I guess that's why the price was so low. So let's take a closer look at this beautiful camera. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Classic, beautiful camera from Soviet Union. Soviets were very good at what they were doing. Yes, this is a copy of a German Ekanta camera, but Soviets, they had Sputnik. They had Valentina Tereshkova. First woman in, sent to the orbit. They had uh, Yuri Gagarin. They had Laika, Laika the dog sent to to the to the orbit. So, yeah, if you if you look at um, all the stuff they they've done, they were they were pretty good. Without further ado, let's let's talk about this camera here. This is a folding camera. It's a six by nine. It can also shoot. 6x6 six six pictures, provided that you have a special mask for it, which I don't have. They made this camera between 1955 and 1958 in um, axes of over 6200 uh, pieces. It is a fourth in a row of a series of Moskvas. Uh, first Moskva was uh, number one, and it was a direct copy of German Iconta, and they probably even used parts and the engineering and even the machinery from Germany. This is a rangefinder, as you can see, it's two windows, and it also has a pop up viewfinder, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. Let's open it up first. On top of the camera, right here, you have a little button. You may think this is a shutter button, but it is not. It's actually a button to open your camera. So you press that down. and the camera opens up beautifully. Here this part is an essential part of the viewfinder system, I mean uh, rangefinder system, and you must pop it up like so in order to use the rangefinder. The lens is super clean, it was just, it just sparkling, sparkling clean. There were two defects with this camera. One, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, was a little pinhole on the on the bellows, and the second one is actually a small crack in a rangefinder window. Those defects, however, they don't affect um, the operation of the camera. The pinhole might have, but I fixed it, so we're all good here. This camera features um, Industrial 23 f 4.5 lens and a Moment 23 shutter. In order to select the shutter speed, you take this knurled outer dial and then you turn it until 
desired shutter speed is shown and aligned with the little marker here on the side of the lens. To select the aperture or f-stop you simply move the little pointer on the side of the lens between 4.5 and 32. The way the rangefinder works is, very, is quite interesting. Um, it's also, it also seems very intricate and prone to failure design, but I don't know, it hasn't failed on me yet, so I, have no, I can't comment on that really. You have two windows, and in the back you have one tiny window through which you, you look. And just like a standard rangefinder, there are two images that have to coincide in order for your pictures to be sharp. The way you focus is you look through that window and then you see image project through this lens. And as I turn this knurled knob, the inner part of the lens over here actually turn. And the image projected in the rangefinder over here overlaps together with the um, with the ghost image, and you know you're in focus. Let's hear the amazing shutter sound at half a second on this beautiful Moment 23 shutter. So let's cock it. You cock it using this little lever here, and then you release it using this button on the left hand side. Oh no, you can't release it. Oh man, this pre camera is broken. No, it is not broken. This camera has what's called double exposure prevention. And it is a really cool feature for this, uh, for this type of camera. I had the Kodak, I had the Bessa, none of them had that type of um, uh, system. So let's see how that works. Over here you have the film advance knob. So what happens as you advance the knob, you see that little window here that was white half a second ago now turned red. That means that you have advanced to another frame but not quite because you still have to check the windows in the back of the camera in order to be sure that you are actually on the next frame. You simply slide the window open, this one or this one, it's gonna be this one for 6x9 and this one for 6x6. This system here is just to give you an idea that yes, you move the, sh you move the film and you're ready to take another exposure. So now, Let's listen to the amazing sound of a shutter at half a second. Beautiful. Oh man. This is this is just amazing. It's like orgasm. So what happened now is the little red window, the little red dot turned white again. So what I'm going to do is advance the film again and watch the window. Try to keep my fingers away. See? There's no stop on it. You actually have to watch the window, but this actually this this is helpful and it tells you that yes, you advanced the shutter. Or you uh, sorry, you advanced the uh, the film. Let's cock the shutter again. And let's release it again at half a second. And now watch the window change from red to white. There you have it. Simple as that. Now in order to open the camera on the side you have this um, wrist strap or uh, not a wrist strap but uh, hand strap. It's somewhat small but for two fingers maybe. So you have this um, knob or tab here and you push it up and the door swings open. Let's take a look at the film gate. What's interesting here is that it has this 
funky design, this funky pattern, which I don't know the purpose of, but it is well used. It is um, the, the the coating, the black coating is uh, worn on it, so it means the camera has been used. There's a seal, a felt um, seal, just like foam seal on certain cameras. This is made out of felt to prevent light leaks. And this is your other half of the um, the back, actually the back door. And you see the windows, one for six by six and one for six by nine. Your fresh spool sits over here and your brand new take-up spool sits on this side. How do you frame with this camera, you may ask? It's simple. You have this viewfinder that should pop out like so. Let's do it again. You simply grab the little tab here, the little nail tab, or, and you just pull it up. And it swings open. It gives you a rough framing of what you're looking at, of what's going to be in your final picture. So this isn't this is an exact, but it's um it's not bad. You know, it's it's centered, so you can rely on it quite good for for the um, for the framing. But it's still it's it's not a real view through the lens viewfinder. Of course, on folding cameras, you're not gonna have that. There's no hot shoe on this camera either, but there's a PC sync port. You can sync your flashes. I don't know if this one is actually synced to X or or bulb. Could be could be bulb. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not going to use it with flash. On the bottom of the bottom portion of the hatch, you have a little foot that you swing open, and the camera can stand by itself. Really neat design. The other part that caught my attention is the actual linkage for the shutter release. It's this silver chrome plated part and this little arm here that I'm pushing up on. That little arm actually pushes up as the shutter button is pressed down so and that releases the shutter. It is similar to my Kodak Tourist uh, that fell apart in one of the videos. Here's the outtake of that video. This one seems better built, sturdier, and not riveted, maybe a little bit better, so that hopefully it will not fall apart in usage. If it does, well, if it does, then I have no other means of releasing the shutter since this camera doesn't have a um, uh, linkage for cable release, which is rather strange. Actually, it has it over here, but it doesn't have it on the lens, like some other cameras would. Let's close it up. First you will take this um, viewfinder, press it down here, press this portion down, and the viewfinder latch is closed. Then what you do is take this rangefinder thingamajig and you fold it down. Then you take the struts, this one here, and this one here and you press on them and the camera kinda swings back in into its hatch and you lock it closed. Notice that it has two uh, ports or two sockets for your tripod they're both 3.8 I have a, I happen to have a 3.8 port or 3.8 screw for my tripod but uh, some German cameras would actually offer you quarter and three-eighths. Maybe somebody took this one off and lost it. Another interesting thing about this camera is the windows themselves. They're very nicely made. Although these are a little bit rusted, they're still very cool looking windows. And on the leatherette itself you have two markings for 6x6 six six and 6x9. Six 
So yeah, you don't, you definitely won't make a mistake. So photography fans, I hope you enjoyed a short overview of this beautiful classic Moskva 4 folding 6x9 camera. This beautiful camera also came with a beautiful leather heavy duty case. Um, I noticed a trend among Russian uh, Soviet cameras they had these heavy duty cases. It has a nice embossed Moskva 4 in Cyrillic, Cyrillic alphabet. Very, very sturdy and heavy duty. Anyways, I'm gonna head outside. I'm gonna take some pictures using this beauty and I'm gonna share them with you at the end of this video. So, again, thank you for watching and keep shooting film. Keep that film alive. Цыганка с картами, дорога, да.